Hello, it is Throwback Thursday, July 26th, 2024. Steve Cypress here. Perhaps you can hear the thunder in the background and you can see the foreboding dark rain clouds and you see the wind is blowing the flag. Uh, we are about to experience what is known here in the Phoenix Scottsdale area in the summertime as a monsoon. That is high winds and a downpour. They usually only last about 15 minutes or so. And sometimes they just blow over. I mean, in fact, you can never tell from one neighborhood to the next. One gets a downpour and the next completely dry. So we'll see what happens. But I figured I would come and uh, talk to you on video today while the storm is approaching, just in case you get some extra added or some only entertainment value from watching the storm come in, because I got a real simple message here, is tomorrow, the opening of the Olympics. Every four years you have the Summer Olympics, every four years you have the Winter Olympics, but uh, let's just talk about the Summer Olympics in Paris, France, starting tomorrow with the opening ceremony, and as an aside, I'm a little confused about the US uh, LeBron James carrying the flag. This is a guy who doesn't like his country, doesn't like the flag, kneels for the national anthem, thinks it's a racist, terrible country, uh, but suddenly he wants to be the flag bearer. I mean, that goes to the overall thought I have, I talk about it a lot here, is uh, how liberals even watch the Olympics. I mean, it's all about nationalism. Everyone loves their country. Everyone wants to put their country first and play their national anthem. And everyone's got their country's flags all over the place and they're they're all over the Olympic Village. You'll see them all over the venues on all the uniforms of all the players and the warm-ups and everything is about country. You'll constantly see the medal count popping up if you watch it anywhere on TV or you see it online or, or anywhere you're reading the gold medal count, the silver, the bronze. It's all about countries. Put your country first and our country is better than yours. And a lot of nationalism and uh, the globalists uh, got to be kind of conflicted here rooting for their uh, obscure, ridiculous sports they like, and yet, uh, uh, what do they not realize the hypocrisy of the, uh, the nationalism going on. But anyway, that's my message here today is uh, based on that, these sports. So I don't know how many sports there are in the Summer Olympics. There's dozens and dozens of sports, and some of these are pretty much incredibly boring sports. Uh, it, it, there's a reason why there's national TV contracts for here in the U.S. for football, and basketball, and baseball, and hockey, and people watch golf and tennis, uh, but not a lot of people watch fencing or swimming uh, or all these kind of you know track and field heats. You're going to see hundreds of heats because there's only like eight lanes or so on a track. And they got narrowed down dozens and dozens of participants. So it's heat after heat after heat where the top runners are not even running at full speed and don't care and whatever. Do this test. Uh, watch a sport, let's say swimming. Watch that with the sound turned down. And uh, imagine that you didn't even see any of the, the graphics imposing the flags in the different lanes. So you didn't know what country it was in. It was just eight people swimming 10 or 20 laps in the pool. Not exciting at all. Here's what makes it exciting, here's what makes it compelling, and here's what you should do in your business as well, is the storytelling. So if you watch any of these Olympics at all, pay attention to the storytelling. NBC and their uh, associated networks and all that are masters of this. They've been covering the Olympics for decades, and they are masters of telling stories. Otherwise, how could you do hundreds and hundreds of hours of coverage on sports that are basically, without the stories, unwatchable, like swimming? But as soon as somebody's going for the gold or setting a record or they're too old or they're too young or they've overcome some hardship or they were retired and they came back and their family is in the stands, you'll see that they'll tell the story, they'll talk about their hardships and what they've overcome and they'll tour their hometown and they'll keep showing their family members, cheering them on and talk about all the drama and all the emotion going on because that's the key. Emotional stories get people to continue to watch heat after heat after heat of track and field events, swimming events, diving, all this kind of stuff. It's all about the stories. 
Okay, facts tell, stories sell. So if you watch all the Olympics or any of the Olympics or none at all, I still highly suggest that you recognize the power of storytelling and you use it in your business, in your advertising, in your marketing, in your sales, in any promotion, anything to do with bringing on new customers, clients, patients, members, participants, whatever it is to your business. Storytelling, emotional storytelling is the most effective way to do it. If you want help with that, go to my website, thewowstrategy.com. I got a video about it. You can email me, steve at stevecypress.com. You can shoot me a personal message or post a comment wherever you're watching this, reading it, listening to it, but reach out to somebody for help because this is one of the most important things you can do. It's a lesson learned from the Olympics starting tomorrow and throwback Thursday. I'm just throwing it back to years and years and years of TV coverage by NBC. Well, they've learned and they've mastered their craft of telling stories to what is otherwise a completely dull and boring and uh, and uh, repetitive and non unwatchable event. And that'll do it for Throwback Thursday, July 26th, 2024. Thanks for being here today. I will catch you back here again tomorrow. Looks like the monsoon, we still have the winds and the storm clouds, but the rain has not started yet. And that's it for me today. I'll catch you back here again tomorrow on Foundation Friday.